You know, I know that, um, that some of you grumble about the speakers that we've had in the past because <laughs> I'd rather hear Rumpha talk because, you know, the information. But um, I think that everyone that we've had here has been very valuable. And in one way or another, um, <laughs> they've, they've helped to reconfirm what we've been taught from a completely outside source. And that's one of the reasons that I invite speakers here. Um, this next gentleman I was uh, introduced to through a videotape from my friend Anne Marie. And then her friend, the captain, sent over this videotape of Alex Collier. And so I was just in the mood to listen to this. And I sat down, and I immediately liked him. And I liked what he had to say. And for six hours uh, videotape, I was glued to it. And one of the reasons that I wanted him to come here is because he addressed issues in this that um, Ramtha pioneered really the changes the days to come and really set everyone on the trend of predictions and um, all those sorts of things. But there was certain knowledge that many of you know that was never out there that we've gotten here, in particular about the blue webs and the blue body. Uh, the different planes, the spiritual self. Well, this gentleman happened to touch upon some of those subjects and I was intently intrigued about his message. And I felt that this group would be an ideal group for him to come and talk to because, uh, simply put, most of us that are in, and I count myself as one of these, in the uh, advanced group, um, <laughs> hope so. I do my field work. Anyway, uh, cut our teeth on changes the days to come from Rumpha. You know, when everybody went hysterically running out and pulling their hair out and say, always creating fear in the marketplace and, you know, all, the, all these politically incorrect things that Rumpha did, well, it turned out to be correct. And one of the issues that was most difficult to handle was becoming self-sufficient and buying our own land and storing our own food, learning to grow it, learning to prepare it, having our own water, moving out of the city. Uh, and there's a, there's, there is a, a school of thought within the school that thinks that's sort of silly if we're gods. But, you know, I love what Ramtha throws back on you. So, well, if you're so hot, then you get out there and let's see you do field work. You know, I mean, that sort of puts that issue to rest. And, <clears throat> and I'm not so stupid to assume that as much as I know that I would totally depend upon my knowingness to get my body through because I'm still on the journey and I'm still developing as well. So I know that this group in particular, he has talked about preparation and about the things that are coming and the war and the 12 days of light and all of those things that some of you may have been starting to get scared to death now. Uh, Mr. Collier has gotten this information from a completely different source. And well, I felt since Rumpa has not addressed for some time now these issues because his focus has been on preparing us spiritually and training us to be spiritual beings instead of physical beings so that spiritually we can take care of our own bodies. That's where Rumpa's whole agenda has been on, to make us preservable for what's about to happen. Um, Mr. Collier, as uh, information flows right along with what we've been taught and what most of us have sort of come to accept without fear, without understanding. And I pointed out to him, I said, you know, <clears throat> Ramtha is very wise and he says, when you're prepared, you don't have any fear. It's when you're unprepared that you have the fear. And you don't know where to go and where to hide and where, what to eat and how to make it and all of the, everything's turned off, you don't know what to do. Well, preparation is the greatest deterrent for being afraid and we've had a very great and wonderful teacher who has endeavored to coax us along and, and give us that sense of self-preparation and sustainment. So Mr. Collier's contacts have been with the Andromedans 
and I just love it. They're blue. And um, <laughs> he didn't know anything about this group. It was wonderful, and maybe he can give you a little background on that, the group, you know. And so um, when he asked his contacts, they said, yes, we know who Rumpa is. We call him the commander. <laughs> so I... <laughs> I don't know what you want to do with that. We all know that he has that ability. <laughs> that ability to command. Um, so we're not sure what context to take this in. Also, I want to also prepare you for something else. I know what it's like to have a head full of knowledge and five hours to try to get it all out. It's taken you 20 years to learn it. Mr. Collier has a head full of knowledge he also has a lot of questions. He has a lot of information. His talk isn't a pat little talk. It isn't written down somewhere and he's memorized it. He has important information on every topic. And I know what it's like to address an issue and then remember that there's other issues to add to that. So I want you to know that he's endeavoring and I've asked him, he said, what can I possibly tell him now? I said, everything you know. Uh, that's a large request, so understand that there's a lot has to come out in the next few hours. And don't get hung up on a particular question. You might make note of it because he does enjoy question and answer sessions that are um, legitimate questions that merit being asked, not what's wrong with my parakeet. but. Uh, pay close attention. Also something else you should be aware of, as with the scholars that have come here, and in particular, uh, having a wonderful interaction with uh, the physicists that have been here, you know. I love tangling it up with them. And the only, the only problem we have is that we're, we, we, we're thinking the same, but our definitions are different, our words are different. Uh, understand he's going to be describing what he's called as uh, dimensions. Uh, we've been taught planes. He has other words for them. But if you understand that his language is a little bit different, you can follow the context of the knowledge that he's about to impart. And lastly, I want you to know that he has a tremendous burden because I know that when I begin to wake up and know things that I wasn't happy about it. It made me really sad. And what made me worse was that I realized that everybody didn't want to wake up and nobody wanted to know what I knew because, because it was uncomfortable and it threatened our security and our little box. I think Mr. Collier is sort of in that place now. He has a tremendous amount of sadness about how do you tell people what's coming and, and knowing what their reception is, and knowing they don't want to hear it, and knowing what our choices are. So he has a burden, and any messenger, and I can tell you, bears that burden, but any messenger worth their salt will live through it, and I think he will. So it's my privilege to present to you the lovely, <laughs> the beautiful, <laughs> the esteemed Mr. Alex Collier. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe we could just do this for three hours. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is the largest crowd I've ever spoke to. I'm usually used to about a, you know, a hundred or something. <laughs> um, I want to thank Jay Z and, and the school and uh, Ramtha at some point when I get to meet him. Thank you very much for inviting me. I was really uh, surprised and. And I have a friend named Val Valerian, and I got on the phone and I called him and I said, hey, what do you know about this bunch? 
<laughs> and he can attest to it. He says, well, I'm one of that bunch. <laughs> so here I am. Is Val here? <laughs> I want to thank Val for um, putting the information on the Leading Edge webpage. Because of that, it went into Nexus Magazine, and it's gone all over the world uh, on a grassroots level. And it's just great. He takes a lot of risks to share the truth with people. And um, let's give him a hand. <laughs> Okay, um, brief overview. Um, I have for 30 years been visited and taken on board by beings who live in the constellation of Andromeda. They are light blue. The, they look like that color of that, but they have no hair. Okay, they're, it's, it's interesting, given quite a few strands of hair away. <laughs> um, <laughs> there used to be a lot more hair here before the contacts, you see. <laughs> this is what 10 years will do. <laughs> um, gosh, I hardly know where to start. Um, there's, they're, they're awesome. They're, they're a very healed race. And, you know, after thinking about it, I think the reason they're so healed is because they have absolute mutual respect for everyone. And they've said that that's the only way we're going to have a healed race and planet, is if we have mutual respect for each other. Uh, and I realize that there's not a lot of that teaching going on anymore in our world. Uh, I've, I've had to look at the character of our race on Earth. Um, because I'm, I'm blessed to be able to compare it to something else. And uh, <clears throat> folks, we've got a lot of work to do, and we have a very short time in which to do it. Um, a lot of things are really going to start happening um, around February, March, April of next year. And um, you know, I wish I could just tell you it's all love and light, but that's just not reality. We live in a duality here. And there are definitely some people screwing races that are screwing with us. And uh, I understand from talking with Jay-Z for about two hours, two and a half hours. It went by in five minutes. So it's true, there is no time. <laughs> um, that you're being taught a lot of what to do, self-sufficiency and self-preservation and being totally self-responsible. It is imperative that what you know when you leave here, you go home and you teach. Because this truth isn't out there. And this is one of the sadnesses that I have, is because I have been shown some probable futures. And um, a lot of people don't make it. Two thirds of the planet don't make it in those probable scenarios. And I, I truly don't want that to happen. You know, there are a lot of really good, generous people, but they don't know the truth. They have no way of attaining the truth because of where they are on a consciousness level. And you're all teachers. You're all leaders. You were leaders before you came in here. You were teachers before you came in here. But when you go out of here, from what I understand from, from Val and, and uh, Judy and uh, Judy Pope and talking to uh, Jay-Z and, and Greg, that you're going to walk out of here professors, PhDs. So uh, don't be afraid. The word warrior used to originally meant not being afraid of who you are. Okay, it didn't mean slash him up, cut him up, you know, murder, betray. It didn't mean any of that crap. Okay, it meant not being afraid to be who you are. And you are all true human beings. We are all royalty. And I will get into that. I once asked, um, I'm going to jump back. The two beings that come to see me and that I have gone with are two Andromedans, a very tall one who's seven and a half feet tall, almost eight feet. He's 450 pounds, and I mean, he's just Duh, like that. <laughs> I, I was very self-conscious. 
<laughs> you know, it's a male thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, his name is Morinet. And uh, the shorter one, as they get older, their skin pales, they, they turn to white. Their average lifespan is, in our linear time would be 2,007 years. So of course you see a lot of changes in that amount of time. <laughs> you know, I mean, hanging out here for 60 years is just a weekend, you know. <laughs> um, and the other one, his name is Phaseus. And Phaseus, in our linear time, is 4,300 years old. He is considered a sage in his world. And um, he will be crossing over, in other words, he will be moving out of their physicality soon. And uh, in Andromeda, when somebody makes the crossover, moves out of their physicality, it's a celebration. Um, you know, we're here, unless you're Irish, it's, it's a somber occasion. <laughs> um, you know, the Irish have the great right idea, they party, you know, <laughs> divide his clothes and everything. <laughs> anyway, I, I once asked to say, you know, what was to become of our future? You know, who, what was going to happen to us? And I want to read you this definition of, of what he said. Now, some of you may have already seen it in the, in the magazine or visited Val's website or, you know, seen the bootleg videos that are all over the place. Um, but this is what they said. Responsible freedom of self-determination, becoming truly self-confident and free, to unconditionally be responsible for oneself without being coerced to accept some higher authority. Now, I understand this is exactly what you're being taught. And, uh, I knew, and what's, what's is not, which is really nice is this is confirmation not only for me, but also for, for Jay-Z and, and her people. Because um, I didn't know anything about Jay-Z until about three weeks ago. In fact, I've given channelers a bad rap. <laughs> <laughs> So, what you're witnessing is me eating crow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I don't like to eat crow. <laughs> That's a male thing too, I think. <laughs> oh. Hey, the changes that are coming are really going to affect, from what I've been told by Morne Faseus, the males the most because we are the most shut down, uh, not only genetically, but spiritually as well. I'm, not, I'm being, just being general, okay? I'm, I'm not meaning all of you. Um, I'm just pretending like the whole world's listening. Looks like the whole world in here. <laughs> um, one of the most profound things that I had to experience was that I was living in Lake Arrowhead, California at the time. Uh, this is 1987. Contacts had resumed for, the, for two years. And uh, everything in my, I was having a Murphy year. Okay, I don't know, you know Murphy, shit happens. I was having a Murphy year. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, sure, I'll check out of here. I, you know, the first cab that comes by. Um, anyway, I, uh, Viseas had come to see me and uh, we had some discussions, there was more teaching and anyway it was time to come back and I didn't want to come back. And I would have embarrassed all of you the way I carried on. But I just didn't want to. I was just like, you know, nothing's working here, let's try something different. And you know, here I am in another reality already. So they were bringing me back, I was literally forced to come back and as I'm on the ground and they're, they're leaving, lifting off. Um, Phaseus, I hear Phaseus in my head, because he, he's telepathic, he's strictly telepathic. Um, he said, Alex, turn around. So I turned around, you know, and I'm just crying, and I'm like, oh God, you're abandoning me. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he just looked at me and he said, Alex, 
The love that you withhold is the pain that you carry lifetime after lifetime. And folks, there's not a day that goes by I don't remind myself of that or I don't think about that. And it's helped me reevaluate all the decisions that I've made in my life. It's also helped me to take myself apart and look at all the little particles of my personality. You know, what's mine and what isn't mine? What are belief systems that I just think are true and what is that I've experienced and really is true? And that took a long, long time and, and I'm still not done. You know, you're, you're constantly redoing yourself and making yourself over and reevaluating your belief systems and you know, our reality here is nothing but belief systems for the most part. And I, I just, you know, I want to pass that on to you because I've made a lot of decisions and I'm sure a lot of you have where your decisions were not based on love and you literally withheld love for some reason, whatever your reason is. And it's time we grow out of that. We have no choice, okay? Shit's about to hit the fan. And it's really all about love and fear. And fear is withholding love. And I'm going to share with you, re, I'm going to read you some things in their own words because they put it far better than I do. Um, Morine has learned to speak English. And there will be a time, probably between, sometime between now and just after 2003, if everything goes well, where he will literally be walking here with us. And he wanted to learn English. And his English is not so good, but you can't blame him for that. You've got to blame me for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I did the best I could. What can I tell you? Um, but <laughs> um, I, I, when they talk to each other, they talk telepathically. And um, their language is holographic, very much like the um, ancient Chinese language or the ancient Japanese. They're literally holographs, but you, you, know, you can't just pull them up off the page. And a holographic language is entire concepts like this. So you will just give one symbol, and in that one symbol is maybe 10,000 years of a history or a meaning or a teaching. And um, it's, it's very hard to describe, and it's taken me a long time to try to figure it out. And they were very, very patient in teaching me how to understand their language. And I want to do questions and answers because there's so much locked in my head that I have not tapped into yet. And unless you ask the question, or somebody asks the question, it doesn't come up. Okay, so I'm, I'm counting on you to ask some really good questions. And if I don't know, I just, I'll tell you, I don't know. Um, in my conversation with, with Jay-Z, uh, she has a very strong foundation because of her teachings with Ramtha. I don't talk the same language. I, I, I'm, I'm really a simple, complicated guy. <laughs> That's mine. OK. So what I want to do is I'm going to read this. I was given this on 11-3, just, just a, a week or so ago, almost two weeks. And it's a current up-to-date of where they're at. And anyway, I'll just read this to you. Um, Alex, we have already spoken with you in detail of your race's genetic transfers and reincarnation before. I will mention them again when necessary because your path and happiness depend on being able to attain the truth. Yes, we are aware of the situation of your planet and it shows great deviation of the right path in the sincerity period. But please, if you would try to share this moment and your planet's evolution as a preparation for the investments which will be made in the very near future for your races. Now there's a whole conversation that preempted this. And basically, I had a contact and I went up there with an attitude. <laughs> you know, I'm a Terran, I got extremes of emotions, you know, and, and I'm really frustrated by a lot of things. You know, I don't understand how the planet's supposed to evolve when nobody wants to hear the truth and most of the truth isn't even available. And I'm extremely frustrated by that. 
you know, uh, and then I hear metaphysicians justify, well, we're teaching the wrong thing, but it's all we have. You know, I, I have a difficult time justifying that. You know, why propagate something that we know isn't real? And that's a whole other issue. When we get to religions, I really want to, like, share with you what I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, this continues. Since the removal of conditions by density technology, your evolution is going to a faster pace, I think you say, than before. We have had to raise the frequency of your planet to move change and enlightenment along. Such a broad word you use, this word enlightenment. It was necessary. This also means great tests of tolerance in situations will be needed by your races. The most important of these tolerances will be caused by delusionary discriminations between your peoples. And folks, this is happening all over the planet, and it's such crap. At, at the present moment, your races are carrying in your DNA genetics the influences of a thousand centuries as you count rotations, that's, you know, one year, both the positive and negative aspects. Please understand we are trying to prepare your races for advanced maturity. At present, many transfers occur in your planet from many different cultures and planes. Each member of the races on and in your planet will naturally exhibit their own mentality. They do and will contradict your habitual cultures. They're very specific about the words they use. In, in fact, you know, I don't even know how they got some of this because I didn't even know some of these phrases. You know, it's like pull it right out of my head and I don't even know what's there. Please do not forget that we have told you about mental conflicts that they cause each to go through tests of maturity. We determine your mentalities through the impulse signals we receive from your race's chains of thoughts. Now the selection of man or woman and the situations they transcend are much more difficult because their preparation of the future is in accordance with their level of consciousness. Alex, you cannot help all your races. Each member of your races will feel their essence in the balancing of positive and negative as they have done and it will be weighed in their own consciousness. Those who prepare and invest will be prepared for the evolution to another density. The continu continuance of your planet, the continents of your planet is changing very quickly. Please don't confuse our compassion for your races with a love for your planet. Please understand that they are separate with our race. We are neither pleased with your world's riches nor dismayed by its poverty. We come, we came to here to assist in the period of sincerity, the clarifying of the original intent in all of us in this vadia. The vadia is a tone that they use and that particular tone means holograph. They've always referred to all of this as a holograph. Because of lineage to your races, we have returned to you. Your world is a place of veiled consciousness. In order to be embodied in physicalness, all frequencies should be assembled in a whole intent. The very distresses, the many anxieties, are the result of conflict with the limitless awareness in your races. This is the reason why your planet races cannot attain your own selves, and yet you desire to possess everything. The reflections of your evolutionary state of physicality cause your races not to live comfortably on your planet. Your present religions cause your races to unify your physical bodies with your abstract egos. You call this progress. We do not. Stop looking to your physicality to bring you enlightenment. Your bodies are the effect of the cause which is intent, moved by emotion which creates physicality. This is their perspective. 
During previous past times in your third density, education of the soul took many incarnations of life and death of the physical body. Situations and reincarnations would reflect the system it appears. All beings would transcend your physicalness in accordance with the degree of consciousness attained. Since it appears that your races, having no concept of the law of consistency, became very fragmented in extremes. Religions became divisions of beliefs and conflicts among your races took place. The worship of belief systems and idolatry came into existence. Reincarnations have become history. And by this means your races, Alex, and others than yours have a probability of directly attaining your full essences. The reason for telling you this in all clarity is to free you of the conflicts and contradictions so your races can attain the truth as soon as possible. So don't ask us about yourself. Ask about yourself to your own self. If your races cannot attain the truth and cannot be unified with your original intent, we will not be able to be in touch with your planet races. Since the ego consciousness in your races still goes on, and since you cannot break the denial of your inner self, your races become detrimental to the planet and to your planetary system. At this moment, there are many beings who cannot attain genuine respect for self and self-awareness in our galaxy. They as well are being kept under control. Their evolutions are being made in an indirect way. Your races have also been persecuted and manipulated by other galactic races from planetary systems negatively charged other than your own. I'm glad you got that. <laughs> Since during your different past time periods, they have tried to prove to your ancestors their own technical power. Fear has been created in your races. We have returned to convey the truth to erase these fears. Since your planet is the site of, of both the most primitive and most high maturity, it is very full of contradictions. Your religions, which have helped many to evolve, have not been released. Your races have refused to let go of a system of beliefs that have not serviced your planet for the last 453 rotations of your star. By freeing you of this, and with the use of common sense, we hope your races will attain your own selves and become fully independent, be it one. Okay. In their perspective, and you know, that's what it is. Um, it, it's, it's obvious that there's just not one truth, there's many truths. Um, the one truth is that we all exist, that we know, okay? That we all have an essence that is undefinable, that is truly eternal. Um, they say that third density, somewhere around just the beginning of December, the year what we know, linear year of 2013, will implode. It will implode. <laughs> the third density will implode. And look at the auras. Wow, check this out. <clears throat> now, what does that mean? Okay. <laughs> I don't know if this is true, but this is what they say. They're convinced that literally what's going to happen is that there's going to be a graduation out of physicality. It means a lot of us are going home, and it means that a lot of others are starting all over, if this is what's gonna happen, okay? Um, a lot of this has to do with our genetics. Uh, according to the Andromedans, we are, our physicality is the sum total of 22 different races that have come down here, spent the weekend, messed with us, and then took off and went home. <laughs> uh, 
okay, intermingled, you know, left uh, children behind and just took off. The Egyptian pharaohs are the perfect example of this, okay? The blue bloods, the, the English family, uh, the Rothschilds who are also blue bloods are another example of this. Their blood is copper based and that's ET, okay, that's ET. And the thing about copper-based blood is that you don't need a lot of oxygen. You tend to, your physicality tends to grow and have a larger lung capacity, okay? Um, so you can live in a lot of other environments where we couldn't. Now, what's interesting is that in our physicality, what we know as Earth, our atmosphere is getting thinner and thinner. I know that there's a lot of talk about the ozone and it's a myth, that it isn't real, that there is no such thing as an ozone crisis, folks. There absolutely is an ozone crisis, okay? We are destroying, the, would I say we, all of us, are partly responsible for this. We are destroying our environment. Um, according to the Andromedans, 3,500 years ago, the oxygen content was between 34 and 38 percent. They say today that it is literally less than 17 percent. Now those of you who have studied biology, what happens to the physical body when the gas, which is oxygen, goes below 15 percent? I'm sorry? Somebody said you die? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Okay, now, why is this happening? Because a group of beings who are Terrans, who are Earth beings, have been made a promise by a group of extraterrestrials that have Orion belief systems that if they will get rid of some of the races on the planet, that the extraterrestrials will use their technology and restore the Earth to its original um, state. Okay, some of that genocide was to be done by viruses. And as most of you know, the AIDS virus was created. And there are others that are coming, anthrax and, and uh, the bubonic plague. You know, all of these things are coming back new and improved, I'm afraid to say, because there's some really truly crazy people that are in positions of power on our planet. Many of them um, go back and forth from our planet to the moon. Now, <laughs> you don't have to buy any of this, and that's okay, you know. But I can tell you this, in the next 10 years, you will absolutely know for a fact. Richard Hoagland will be vindicated. He truly will, okay? ruins on almost all of the planets in our solar system. There is life as we speak on Uranus right now. There's life, plant life and mammal life as we speak. Okay, it's there. If you want to do something to burst everybody's bubble, you know, get them to send a satellite there. You know, and if you have any connections, get them to keep the cameras rolling as it enters, enters the atmosphere. Anyway, <laughs> um, I want to talk about genetics. Uh, I'm going to read to you something that was given to me on 8-6 of 96. Actually, it was given to me a little bit sooner than that, and it took me quite a while to get it to Val. Um, and it's about genetics. It's, it's not very long, and, and I just ask that you, you bear with me. But apparently, we were all copper-based. All of our, our physiology was based on copper. We were all blue bloods, okay? We were all royalty. In fact, we still are. It's just that our physiology is not working the same. And the reason it isn't is apparently because of a nuclear war that occurred here, one of the nuclear wars that occurred here. Now, why Earth? Well, number one, it's a really beautiful place, okay? It's not the only planet that has water, and when you and when you listen to 
the scientists talking about you know, the different moons that have water on them, you gotta ask yourself this, where did the water come from? If you have a moon that has no atmosphere, how did the water get there? Because it wasn't always there. It wasn't always like that. It had atmosphere. They were moved. Even Earth was moved from its rotation twice. And there's a possibility, if it's able to happen, and I talk with this to Jay, with Jay-Z, that they want to do it again. The flood of Noah, okay, <laughs> was a moving of the planet from its original orbit. That's what caused it. Okay, we're talking about huge motherships that just tag on, hook a little, little chain to the planet and just move it. <laughs> okay, they had this technology. But that's what it is, it's technology. Okay, apparently we can do these things with our own minds if we're disciplined enough and we're clearly focused on our intent. And um, with talking with Jay-Z, that is exactly what Ramtha apparently has been teaching you. Okay, to remember who we originally were before we fell into time and fell into physicality. So I will read this. In your linear time of third density measurement of 439,231 rotations ago, war on a grave scale occurred in your solar system. This aggression occurred against those on your worlds that included not only you Terrans, but also those of Nibiru. This invasion of your system by Orion was led by a queen named Suti. This war was destructive on many levels and frequencies of physicality. We will focus tonight on your Terran physical form. It matters little to those who hear you, Alex, who do not listen. Please share this regardless of any emotional return to you in challenge. When your science truly removes their bigotry, they will discover of the, wis the wisdom of it. The last grave conflict was very harmful to your physical form many weapons of destruction, many of atom splitting have been used, which means nuclear weapons. This is the reason for most of your Terran skin tones. We shall explain. Orion was and is most interested in the females of your race because of the procreation, reproductive, and genetic strengths. We want to share the fact that much of your Terran history has been misleading in its truth by those who eventually conquered in control of your solar system. Nibiru won, but only a short battle before they and other outposts were forced to leave your solar system because of genetic damage. Your original races were green-skinned. This we know because of large copper traces in your Terran 22 blood types. Also, the pituitary and thyroid were fully functional. The genetic damage to these organs was caused by radioactivity in air and all things of contact. The air was like this for a long time. It caused the genetic memory of these organs to be closed and almost atrophied. Your world experienced drastic changes in climate and massive magnetic fluctuations. Your different skin tones spaces are a result of an edema damage to your blood. It was then necessary for survival to create self-sufficient and contained environmental habitats, both above and below the earth. Now folks, this is what the Garden of Eden was. It was an artificially created environmental habitat. Okay, it's like you take like what Richard hoagland has been talking about. You know, you take a dome city, you build this dome, and then you terraform it underneath it. It's exactly what these were. Um, let's see, where was I? Much of the fossilization of your Terran remnants is caused by this radiation of your planet. Your system contained three suns at the time. Only two remain. I'll read that again. <laughs> Your system contained three suns at the time. Only two remain. 
Write it down, write it down, it's a question. Your physicality, <laughs> your physicality in its original form contained a great balance of zinc, copper, magnesium, and iron. Your true blood color was green, like your chlorophyll. Some we have discovered even had a gold tint in it. At such, your physicality could survive in a high carbon dioxide atmosphere. Because of this, because of your, because of the skin color, the only stars in your system that affected your physical form were in the color spectrum of orange, red, blue, and green. Now think about that, okay? If you picture in your mind everything's a holograph, okay, which is a free, which is a group of frequencies. Because of this skin color green, the only stars in your system that affected your physical form were in the color spectrum of orange, red, blue, and green. Many of your Terran races were stranded on the surface. The genetic changes were the result of radiation damage. Your race went from green to red to yellow to black to white. Let's run this again. <laughs> your skin, your race, skin color went from green to red. It's the Native Americans, the Egyptians, and the Mayans to yellow, which are Eurasians, to black, which are Afro Afro uh, African and Afro-Americans, to white. Your white races were then considered to be genetically the weakest. <laughs> Puts a whole new light on uh, prejudices, doesn't it? <laughs> I know the Nazis aren't happy about this. <laughs> it's just as well, I don't like them anyway. <laughs> um, as such, the survivors and descendants of the war were genetically altered and became white through edema. And they were persecuted and forced to live underground, only to surface 5,508 rotations ago to the surface of your world. Now there's, somebody had read this and they sent me an email and they, they had said uh, that, I don't know, somewhere that there's a legend that the white race appeared out of the mountains of Tibet some time ago. And I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I'll ask uh, the Living Encyclopedia Val if he knows. <laughs> um, let's see. The copper bloodline is now a small race on your planet, but it is, it is strongest genetically. Your native red nation race is very strong and easiest to discover and understand. And folks, this might understand, this might explain why there are so many abductions of the Native Americans on the reservations. And why even today they're still being persecuted. You know, because if you're a coward, you suppress the strongest. And of course, you know, many of us don't do much about it. You know, I don't want to get involved. You know, that's their problem, it's their issue. You know, we owe it to them, we owe it to ourselves. Um, let's see, the red is the closest to your original form among you. Your physicality had a natural defense to positive and negative frequencies due to the copper mineral in your blood. This lack of copper in your blood now has caused a partial loss of brain capacity and nervous system. Remember your DNA contains cellular memory. It is possible to unlock this memory with the use of minerals such as copper. Your blood systems adapted to iron because of copper depletion due to radiation. We will share more with you, but we must return now. Be at one. They always end it with be at one. 
Okay. Uh, just keep going. <laughs> um, are there any questions? <laughs> I don't want to bore you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> You guys are so great. I'd take you all home, but I can't feed you. <laughs> um, I've talked with Mornane Faseus about um, maturity, and a lot of this had to deal with me specifically about how to grow. And you know, there. And when this first started, they, they didn't tell me that I would would be speaking or would be required to speak. And that's because I didn't read the fine print on the contract. <laughs> uh, and you got to read the fine print, folks. <laughs> okay? Do yourself a favor. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to read to you the stages that they, um, they said that the human being goes through. And I don't this is not just us. There are human beings everywhere. Not only on our plane of physicality, but on other planes. And I want you to know that even though uh, you may not see them, even though you know you talk about the, well, what I refer to as dimensions or densities, um, what apparently uh, Ramtha refers to as the planes, there is a physicality on every one of those planes or densities. Okay, it's not, they're just whispering little clouds and there's a light breeze and if you're lucky, one will blow through you and oh, hi, how are you? That's not what it is, okay? <laughs> it's a lot more complicated than that. <laughs> uh, so these are the stages that a true human being goes through during its, his, his or her, its evolution. The first is the wandering where we come from, why, our purpose, and gathering our tools. The second is an initiation, preparing our own path, each one different, purifying, and hopefully centering. The next is honoring, understanding the source of our creation. That's a biggie. Recognizing the sacred in oneself. And I guess that's exactly what you're being taught here at the school, is how to recognize your sacredness. Stating intention, realizing and acknowledging one's true purpose to create self. Surrender, big issue with me. <laughs> Well, you know, we have, we have this concept of surrender as you just let, like, anything happen to you, and that's, that's not really true. Letting go of control to allow vulnerability. To learn <laughs> what is already known. I forgot. <laughs> Embrace our own darkness. Walking into the unknown parts of self. Being and becoming the void. Yeah, I'll do that after I go through it the first time. Lighting the flame in the heart, connecting to self and finding meaningful, honest ritual. Transformation, climbing the ladder of self-responsibility to hold a vision of being oneness, being the vision that alters all perception. Becoming human, Empathy and compassion toward all. Being in truly responsible relationships. And folks, I've learned for me that that's the secret of life, is relationships. Because they all mirror back a part of us, a part of me, all the relationships I have. Um, walking the path. Integrating all of life's experiences. Being a teacher by being. Service, 
discarding the illusion of separateness, total approach to life in humility and joy. And the last, the worship of the isness is the creation of self. The isness is their concept of creator, creation, what we refer to as God. I don't like to use the connotation God much anymore because, you know, our perception of it here, you know, is based on biblical teachings. And those beings, the God in the Old Testament and the God in the New Testament are extraterrestrials. They're not the big guy, okay? <clears throat> the big gal, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are there any questions now? Okay. <laughs> Let me get some water. Okay. Um, fear is a big issue. At least not in this room, but outside this room it is. It is with me on bad days, you know. <laughs> um, so I would like to share with you their perspective of fear and trying to understand it. In your time and space at present is a great challenge to you all. That would be the expression of fear. For any of you to be in fear is to lack clear understanding of most situations. We have observed on your world, we have observed that your world is at a most confused point in your history and evolvement. We understand your remarkable drive and commitment to be alive, survival. We, however, are not understanding of your need to create tools of death, expecting they will keep all in a space of understanding and peace. <laughs> it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> We have observed that you build, create, and plan in a space of fear, not in the consciousness of love. So your defensive position of institutions that create and employ are always then in a state of unraveling and disintegration. We share this with you because they drain you and your earth of energy, both the spiritual and materially physical. Fear always has to feed. Fear does not create itself. It has to feed. The fear we observe is difficult for us to understand. This is the Andromedans. It depletes you of your focus on the original intent. Now they've referred to this a lot. And they've never come right out and said what the original intent was. But I suspect it's that definition I read you in the very beginning. That that was our original intent. It is elusive. It's a very secretive energy. Fear withholds love. This is most saddening to see and feel. How can we share understanding and love when so many of you are withholding from self and each other? You guys need some viral defense or something? Okay, please try to feel the words. We as a race are trying to express to your race. One of your original intentions in creating your physical reality is the idea of creating and learning to manipulate and express yourselves through physicality, using your consciousness. Okay, that's, it is your consciousness that is the gift of the isness that the isness has given you, and in fact, all things that bear spirit. It is the gift that has been clouded, and most importantly, clouded by fear. This creation of fear is completely irrational to whom you all are. Fear, as we ourselves at one time as Lyran ancestors, sought to defend and legitimize withholding of love. We have come to understand that withholding love only creates perpetual disintegration. We have discovered in our home galaxy the ruins of vast races having achieved recognition that have ceased to exist. They destroyed themselves simply because they withheld love and drained the very life force 
out of their intent and imploded and destroyed their self-creation. Fear is the opposing projection to original intent. The first projection of fear is denial. <laughs> An emotion of incredible restriction. And as a restriction, denial and fear will result in the complete opposite reality as that which it claims to be. Fear is based in our perspective on a misunderstanding of one's own worth and security. Why is this so? We have formed a perspective based on your history. Your many religions have helped and hurt this process. Some of your world beliefs have many convinced they are sinful creatures of nature. Now I just want to add something here. In one of my conversations with Mornay, the word sin came up, and I brought it up. I was born and raised a Catholic, so I was fully uh, indoctrinated. <laughs> and um, he told me that the word sin is a word that comes that is pre-Sumerian. And the word sin originally meant genetic defect. So maybe that'll help you with a perspective when you read the Bible again, if you should read it again. <laughs> Some of your world beliefs have many convinced they are sinful creatures of nature. Your sciences teach that your physical form is a pool of chemicals thrown together by accident so that you are all an accident. <laughs> Living meaningless lives of chance. And folks, the first group of ETs that get here who are not going to benevolent and they're going to pass themselves off that they are, are going to be telling you that. That basically that, that you, that we are, a, are their creation, that they own us because they created us. And the fact of the matter is they didn't. Okay, it's, it's another lie. And the first group will probably be those from Cirrus B that will be openly contacting us. They're full of shit. Okay. <laughs> you know, the game continues and uh, a lot of people are going to fall for it because the earth will be going through changes and they'll come down and we'll save you and, you know, this is the way and so on and so forth. And, um, you know, basically what they're going to do is they're going to use our free will against ourselves. Because that's what you have. That's all you have is your free will. It's the only true sovereignty you have in this menagerie of a holograph which we call existence. Okay, you are because you want it to be. It's that simple. And if you don't want to be, then you can change that too. But it's your decision. Okay, it continues. I'm sorry. Um, you fear a God whom a book says is a loving, forgiving God who will eternally throw you into an abyss for making mistakes. <laughs> it creates serious dysfunction, don't you think? <laughs> Which way do I go? <laughs> and you do nothing, you know? It is in our perspective where this fear of unworthiness and insecurity is created from. Many in your world, Alex, have come to understand that fear, the idea of fear, is their enemy. And all of you struggle between understanding and fear and reason and fear. Please, we ask you to share this with your race. This struggle is in no way predetermined. And our perception is that this struggle will lead your world to peace and self-responsibility or your extinction as a race. This would grieve us. It's time to return you now. And I was given that on 2 9 of 91. <clears throat> so, in dealing 
with the reflections that Moronet and Phaseus have given me um, about our race. It, it's been difficult to want to come back, especially when I've seen how they, they treat each other. The very first time I was taken on board a, an Andromedan mothership, I have actually spent three months with them. I lived with them for three months in 1986. But when you, when you, and, but in our linear time, I was only gone 18 minutes. Time travel is a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was home to make car payments and everything else. <laughs> And um, <laughs> I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> oh, okay. How they treat each other. Anyway, the first time I was brought on um, on an Andromeda mothership, and they are 900 miles in diameter. Okay, they are completely self-contained worlds. Everything they need is there. I had to wear a belt so that it would keep my physicality together so that I could spend this time with them. With the very first time I, I walked on and in the middle of, they're made up of different levels. The craft I was on had 24 different levels. And um, in the middle of these craft, there is a 21 mile by 21 mile park with trees and everything, okay? And they use extensive technology and holographs. And they can literally create their sunrise, their sunset, okay? And, you, and, and the trees and plants grow because it is a holograph, but it is real even though they're creating it with technology. The very first time I walked on, there were children. They teach their children in the middle of these parks. Everything's done in nature, like very much like the Native Americans used to do, you know, when the teepee got too small. And I walked on, and there were a bunch of children there, and as we walked out of a corridor, down a corridor, and out into this huge space of what looked like, could be anywhere like Agoura Hills or someplace out here, a park, the children moved away from me. And I was like really hurt, you know, I was like, oh man. And Mornay immediately picked up what I was feeling and he said, it isn't you, we have been teaching them about your race. <laughs> it's really not all that funny. <laughs> okay, um, they were afraid of us. You know, and these are children I have never seen before, but immediately felt our energy, my energy, because I represented all of us. You know, and I do the best I can, sorry. I mean, <laughs> but you know, I got my own stuff to work out too. So, you know, they're learning, and, and, and I'm, I'm amazed that they, you know, they still want to come back and, and help. Another time I had been, um, waiting for them, they finally showed up, and as I was walking into the control room, I was being led by another Andromedan, uh, Moronet was looking at a bunch of meters on the wall and some monitors measuring our atmosphere, and he looked really sad. So I said to him, I said, what's the matter? And he just pointed to the atmosphere and he goes, don't they understand that it's here because they needed it? They don't understand our suicidal tendencies. They, they don't. Uh, I guess they have the perspective that we should really know better. I don't know where they got that. Um, so, I mean, that's just one of them, you know. Um, uh, another time, Viseus was watching television on the ship. They were picking up television. And I told them that's not a good idea. <laughs> Even on Earth, that's not a good idea. <laughs> And um, he had been watching a news broadcast about um, 
about a shooting in Chicago. That's what it was, where a cop shot a, uh, a cop shot a, a man, a black man, and then rushed over and tried to save his life. He had a hard time understanding why the policeman would try to take the life and then try to save it. He, he didn't understand the contradiction, and I don't know that they've still clearly dealt with that. Um, you know, our, our reality that we know, that we accept as reality, is extremely foreign to a lot of other different races. They simply don't understand it, and there's like no way we could really truly rationalize it to them when they truly come from a space of unconditional love or mutual respect. Um, and I have not done a good job in explaining it to them. Because when I really stopped to think about it, it didn't make any sense to me at all, either. Um, so as Val would say, it's time for a new paradigm. And I guess that's what Ramtha is doing, teaching all of you and, and those before you and those to come after you. Um, I've given a lot of thought to our race and the character issues. And I just want to share with you some of my thoughts on the human race and about people. A lot of this comes from my own experience dealing with us. A human being whose heart shows no passion is a person who doesn't have a life. A human being who doesn't give from his heart or her heart is a person who will lie to you. I've had to learn that the hard way. A human being whose heart is committed to nothing is a person who will not try, who will only take. A human being who is not willing to risk or take chances for love is a person who is absolutely empty inside. They're already dead. They're just sucking up air. I've, I've come to this conclusion because of my relationship with Moranay and Phaseas. I absolutely love these two beings. They are my fathers, my brothers, my friends. Um, and, you know, in some respect, even my sons, because I've had the opportunity to, to teach them. You know, I mean, even English, it was like, you know, I felt like I was a really big deal, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, there's, there's so much information out there that is totally bogus. I went to the Star Visions conference. I'll probably get into trouble because this is beyond video, but I'm not going to do any more anyway. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't pull any punches. I really don't. I mean, what the hell? Life's too short, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this incarnation. <laughs> Okay, we have a difference of opinion. <laughs> hey, you know, I've been hanging out with those guys and, you know, they live thousands of years. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. But I don't want to live a thousand years here. <laughs> Not the way it is. <laughs> okay, where was I? <laughs> Star Visions, Star thank you. See, it's the insomnia, little munchkins around 3.30. Somebody wrote in a card we got, up around midnight, when you hear that mournful cry, just remember at 3 a.m., you can give it another try. <laughs> oh, and it's so true. The Star Visions, there was a guy there who had some pictures of some craft, and he said that uh, he has been in contact with Syrians. And he mentioned Cirrus B. And uh, he, then he went on to make a speech, and uh, Jesus Christ is a starship commander. He lives on Earth underground in a place called Valley of the Echoes, and that they're coming back, and there will be a war, and those who are not in favor of Jesus will be destroyed. <clears throat> And they gave this guy a standing ovation. I'm not kidding. They gave this guy a standing ovation. And um, it was really sad 
because these people don't have a clue. They don't want to take responsibility. You know, they can totally thwart this war. We don't have to do anything really about this as long as we started working and learning to live with each other, granting mutual respect, having natural tolerance for our race. And I know it's not easy because of all the conditioning, but folks, I need your help. I desperately need your help. You know, we don't need to create the book of Revelations, and that's exactly what we're doing. And there are beings out there that have technology that are more than happy to help us play this thing out because we are a threat to them. And the reason we're a threat is not only who you are spiritually, which I will get into, but it's also because of our genetics. Okay? They, our physicality was the Earth, uh, the Terran physicality, which is what we're known as, was melded between human extraterrestrial and the primate race, as this is what I've been taught. And it is that melding of those two races which gave us our incredible extremes of emotion, which is why we can hold so much creative energy inside of us. This is why they're concerned, and this is why the Andromedans are in awe of our creative energy. Because here they have to use technology to create some of their physicality. We don't. They're amazed that when you leave your house, okay, when you leave your house, everything is still there when you come back. It doesn't disintegrate. <laughs> Now, if you live in South LA, well, then you got to worry about your stuff being there. <laughs> They're amazed at that, of the intent and the energy that it creates to create every one of those little tchotchkes that you have on your shelf. <clears throat> They're amazed. Because they're, they're very simple. They're very, very simple. They don't have all the little stuff that we have. <laughs> According to the Andromedans, what they have been able to discover, and apparently other races also have discovered this, is that they say that in our what we know is our, our universe, which is a holograph, that there are 11 layers. I'll just deal with this. 11 densities, and now apparently there is a 12th. This is their perspective, okay? And they say that we fell into time, into physicality. They say, the Andromedans say, that many of the extra, other extraterrestrial races are fascinated by what it is we know that we have locked up inside of us. Because we have already evolved to that level and then have come back to start all over again. They don't have access to this. What they think we know but apparently is locked up inside of us. Not only that, but apparently we specifically chose this physicality because of the vibration that we held because of the primate and human, because the physicality was able to hold such an extreme of emotions that we chose this physicality. And when you couple that with the idea that this physicality is also made up of 22 races, one of which includes the Andromedan race, they say we're royalty. They say that every single one of you is royalty on this planet. That you are royalty. And that many of the other extraterrestrial races, particularly the benevolent ones, acknowledge this because of the fact that we are spirit and we have these genetics inside of us. The, the, the dark ones, 
which include the gray men and others, they see us as beasts because of the primate. How can we allow this to surpass us? And this is why the constant genetic and mental manipulation. And in talking with Jay-Z, you know, like she was saying earlier, we both, we, we talk different ways, but we're really, in many respects, saying the same thing. They're concerned that once we move out of our prison of third density, that we will radically change everything. I don't know about you, but I need a change. <laughs> oh, God, I'm so burned out. <laughs> I want to go home. Um, the Andromedans told me that the reason that I am one of four contactees, um, apparently there will be more added in the very near future, and I hope that some of that has to do with my griping. Um, <laughs> I have, I've bitched and moaned and everything else. <laughs> it's just, it's just impossible, you know, it's just not enough people. Um, that there will be more, and those that will be contacted, you, the reason I and the other three were chosen, I guess, in the first round, um, is because that apparently when they were here, they had a colony 62,300 years ago. It's an approximation. Um, they were here for only 65 years, that I was one of them that was here. That's how I got here, okay? And there was a battle, and they were chased out of here. And um, I was killed in that. So, uh, you know, when I, when I write this number on the board, 62,000, that's, that's a large number to me, you know? And uh, I know it's linear time, and I know it feels like it was just yesterday. Um, but I know that I, I'm from another place. And all of you are. You know, your souls were not born and hatched here. I can tell you that. We've all come from someplace else. Um, they say that our universe, what we know is our universe, if we were to put it in our linear time, is a 21 trillion year old holograph. They also say, that there are a hundred trillion galaxies total in this, which we call our universe. That's including the other dimensions. A hundred trillion. And some people still don't think there's life out there. <laughs> I don't know what to do with folks like that, you know? I have some really good friends that I work with that are, you know, very, very good people. They're very awesome people, um, have full of integrity, um, but they are convinced that there's going to be a rapture and they don't have to do anything but just wait. And God, that pisses me off. <laughs> I mean, there's so much work to do and you're just going to sit on your butt and wait? Suppose he changes his mind, I said to one guy. <laughs> 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 He goes, oh, he, he couldn't do that. <laughs> I said, is he God? Well, yeah, well, then he could, you know? <laughs> oh, God, I'm so frustrated. Um, <laughs> I just, you know, I, I just, I feel the pressure of, of things starting to get tighter and smaller. And uh, it's really great to see, to see this. Um, I was very disillusioned last weekend, and I had basically told my wife, Carla, I said, that's it. I'm fed up. I've had it. You know, I even thought about not coming because I was just so burned out. Well, you know, folks, it, you know, it isn't easy walking these two worlds, you know? <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> I forgot who I was talking to. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> and um, you know, there was there are times that I when I, I go out for walks at night and and I try to call them down and they don't always come. Okay, I want to read you something else that uh, was from Phaseus. This was given on six five of ninety six. The most necessary action now for all of you who are aware is to do what you are capable of to illuminate your degenerated societies. Consciousness is your scale. It always provides balance which does not fail. It speaks to those and tells them what to do and what not to do. To one or all beings who choose to be evolved. The administrators of your governments are responsible for professional order, not your moral codes of order. The key to your happiness, Terrans, is in the hands of your own consciousness. We have perceived that you Terrans have arranged your lives not according to yourselves, but according to others. Your disappointments are due to this fact. This kind of conduct, this kind of conduct of yours is what is limiting your races. Each one of you is a free soul, a free consciousness. No one is the servant or slave of anyone else, though the hidden ones would trick you to believe otherwise. Mutual respect is imperative for a healed planetary race. Help is being extended to you if you so want it because of our genetic lineage to your races. We would like to be with you during your difficult times and we are right on the edge of that. Today, you are a planet and a race that destroys itself in ignorance. Your goal is to uncover the genuine human beings lost deep within yourselves. Always be at one with yourself. And then he went on at another point and said, we have been in communication with many races in discussions regarding militant decision making. We all agree that conflict in the end serves one purpose, to create fear. And this we know removes the original intent from creation. We are hopeful that sincerity will gain a momentum. Just because they have these really fancy ships and uh, you know all this other stuff, it doesn't mean that they're, you know, that they're great guys to go have a beer with, okay? I, I want to I, I want to share some things with you that I've not talked about publicly, and um, there are things that are going on. There are abuses of the past that I want to share with you. What Mornay and Phaseus have told me, for example, some of the missing children have not only been taken by the Greys, by Orion, but also the Pleiadians. Now, apparently in the star, in the, in the systems near Aldebaran, there are human Terran colonies that the Pleiadians have taken children from here. When I asked Morinay if they had permission to do this, he said, no, there were many broken hearts left behind. Okay, again, whatever the justification is, it's still a violation of free will. And that's how you have to measure somebody else's actions, okay? Sirius has also been doing this. There, are, there were many children taken underground, not only by our government, um, many of the children um, were, were, uh, were eaten, okay? And I'm, I, I see a lot of heads shaking up and down. I just want you to know that the Andromedans confirm this as well. And ladies and gentlemen, they are our future. Whatever it's going to be, you know, they are our future. And you've got to protect your families. Okay, we, you, the family is the target. Because that will, that will pull the rug right out from underneath our society in a heartbeat because a lot of people find their strength, even if they're cowards, they find their strength in their families. When that doesn't exist, then we got big time problems. 
children are leaving this planet a hundred, at least a hundred thousand a year. And you're not hearing about it. It's from all over the world. They're just being taken out of here. And the ETs feel, some of the ETs feel like they have a right to do it. And basically, it's, it's a deal that was cut with our world governments. Okay? I wanted to share that with you because it might help you when things totally start to unravel. And for those of you who are Americans, you know, you're about to witness the great implosion of the United States government starting this year, starting after April. Um, it's just going to start to unravel next year. Okay, the lies are going to start to come out. The truths are going to start to come out. And um, you're going to be blown away at how corrupt, how corrupt your government is. <laughs> okay, again, I forgot who I was talking to. You got to understand, I don't talk to an educated crowd like this, you know? Uh, this is really a treat for me. <laughs> I mean, you guys are just awesome, you know? <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to show you some Andromedan holographic language. Now, remember, this is only 3D. <laughs> if you can in your minds, you know, use your holographic technology that you're being taught and pull it off the board and be able to move all the way around it. minute break in 10 minutes? Would well, you want to at least stand up and stretch? Well, you're gonna. <laughs> okay. I'm not an expert on how holographs work, but in this holograph, if you could see it physically, all the way around, contains information. This symbol, when given holographically to another race, totally tells them everything about the Andromedan race. And apparently we are supposed to do that, be able to do that, and apparently we already do, but we don't really understand how it works. Okay. This is the symbol for love or mutual respect. This is not a money sign. <laughs> Again, it's holographic. When they when they say this if, if they were able, if they were to project it inside of you, and you know our consciousness and our our, our, our both our hemispheres would totally under understand it. In this one symbol would be their entire concept and everything they know about mutual respect. See, it's simple. You know, it doesn't take 200 pages to explain love. It's just there. It is.
This is Earth physicality. When they give this symbol, this symbol contains our entire Earth history. Again, you lift it off, okay, you're looking at it fourth dimensionally, fifth dimensionally, you're underneath it, above it, and inside is just contained information. Okay, can I erase this? <laughs> this one? All right. Thank you. <laughs> this is very cool. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> I mean, it's great to be able to do the job with all the tools, let me tell you. That's a symbol for war or confrontation. Oh, God, the water's really good here. That's the fax number. <laughs> or the email. Oh, you guys can't see? I can't pull it off the board on wall, I'm sorry. Well, somebody else over here has it. They can share it with you. Okay. Now, this is a much more complicated one. That's the symbol for the earth races. That's all of us, white, black, red, yellow, and green. Now this next one should be really interesting to you guys. I'll just put it right here. Now, those of you who are into astrology, um, this is very similar to the circle cross, which goes back to history. And uh, apparently that symbol is supposed to represent peace. 